Hi, it's Karen, and I'm at the Cool Tool Studio to show you how to use our finishing touches molds to make these really fun hoop earrings. Here's what you're going to need for this project. Cool Slip, Easy 960 Sterling Clay, and I ended up using 6 grams for both hoops, so they're really lightweight. You're also going to need clay thickness rolling frames, a wick away, the FTM mold, I'm going to be using round dome today. You're going to need some sanding tools, a clay roller, and then some sort of circle to form your earrings on. I'm using this little container, but if you're doing a smaller hoop, our silicone ring mandrels work great as well, or any other round form that has a nice smooth surface to it. I'm also going to be using a clay scraper, tweezers, an ultra clay pick, a brush, and a six inch ruler. And I'm gonna be working on top of a work surface and I'm also gonna be using this extra Teflon work surface today. I've done quite a bit of testing with different clay bodies to see which perform best in these molds. Our clay silver does well in them and Hadar's clay performs beautifully in them as well. Also, our Cool Tools brand clays perform very well in these molds. Unfortunately, I did not have very much success using the PMC clay bodies as they would peel out instead of staying in the low areas. So for this project, I am using fresh clay and it's important that you're using fresh clay because if you're using dry clay, you might get little cracks on the surface where it's not able to smoothly and evenly get down into the mold. And I'm gonna be using a clay scraper to push the clay into the mold before scraping the surface and cleaning it up. And I'm not using any cool slip. It's really easy to get these pieces out once they're dry. And using Cool Slip will actually make it a little more difficult for you to clean up the surface without pulling the clay out of the mold. So I'm starting with this first sweep where I'm really pushing it in. And if it's easier for you, you can rotate and come at it from a different angle. And then once it looks like the clay is in there pretty well, I'm going to clean my blade, and this is a very sharp edge, so push away when you're cleaning the excess clay away. And then I'm going to come back with a final stroke to clean up the excess there. So I'm going to move on to the 3 millimeter size. And for this project, I'm only using the 3 millimeter and the 2 millimeter size, but it's just so easy while I'm at it, I might as well make some bigger ones too and just add them to my collection. So and again, once you get the clay in there thoroughly, you're going to come back for another wipe to remove it all. And I kind of dragged a little too hard on those guys in the center, but that's okay. It's really easy to fix. I'm just going to dab my finger in some water and then kind of gently massage it back up against that edge. That guy too. And then I'm just gonna swipe this across to clean up the moisture, help it dry more quickly. And I always compare this to kind of rolling a coil. It's really easy to do once you get it figured out, but it might take a couple tries for you to figure out the right angle and kind of get your hands used to the process. And then once you've got it down, it's such a snap to make these shapes. All right, so these molds take a little bit to dry if you're just leaving them to air dry. I would recommend an hour or two, and then just give them a tap, and if it looks like they're releasing, then you're good to go. You wanna make sure that you're not forcing the mold and forcing the pieces out of the mold. If you do that, you're gonna distort the shape. You can speed this up by putting it in a clay dehydrator or placing it on top of a hot plate or a mug warmer. So I'm gonna take this one off to dry. So here's a finishing touches mold that has dried with all my clay in it. And I found the easiest way to get them out and not send them flying is to cover them with an additional work surface and then flip them over and then peel them back. And some might kind of stick from static, but if they're not easily releasing like this, 
then you need to let them dry a little bit longer. And there's a couple there that I'm going to have to pick out. But just like that, you have all of these little elements that you can work with. And I have this container that I like to store and organize them in because then you have this really nice inventory that you can just work from and be like, what does this piece need? And then try out different shapes and see what looks best. So I'm going to move these into my containers and then we'll start assembling our earrings. So I'm working with the two of the smaller sizes from that finishing touches mold. So I went ahead and pulled them out of the collection to make it easy. And I'm going to start this project by building little units. And then those little units will be dried and then picked up and moved onto my hoop form. So I'm going to be joining these circles with water and then allowing them to dry and then moving them as a group instead of trying to place them individually onto the rounded hoop form. So kind of generally position where things are going to be, but you might move them when you're adding the water and you'll have to scoot them closer once you do anyways. So some water. And you want to very thoroughly wet these because you want it to really soak in and make nice strong bonds. So they'll end up kind of looking like they're sitting in a pool by the time I'm done. Oh, I flipped one. Just gonna flip them back and nudge them in. So I really am dampening the whole form and kind of scooting things close because the more area that's touching, the stronger the connections between the shapes will be. So there's one of my little units and I'm gonna end up having nine in total. So I'm gonna keep making these and then I'm gonna allow them to dry and we'll catch back up. So these have dried and I just wanted to show you that you can pick them up and move them as a unit now. And that's gonna make it really easy when it comes time to embellish your hoop earring. And I've only made nine because for the sake of the video, I'm just making one of the pairs of hoops. But if you're gonna be making both of them, you would need 18 of these units. So I'm gonna set these aside and move on with rolling the clay to make my hoop. So I'm going to start off with cool slip on both my work surface and my roller. And that was plenty for both. And I want these earrings to be nice and lightweight, so I'm going to be rolling my clay to two cards thickness. And I have some easy 960 here. Plenty of clay. So I'm just going to trim that and give it another roll to even everything out. And then I made these hoops nine centimeters long. If you want a smaller hoop, then, or a longer hoop, it's completely up to you. But I'm just going to mark. where that cut needs to be. And I really like using the guidelines on these thickness rolling frames. And I'm gonna kind of scoot it over so I get a nice clean edge and find that nine millimeter mark again. Scoot it over some more. So what I'm trying to do is use this as a guide so, and then I'm going to cut on the other side because this happens to be as thick as I want my hoops to be. And then that side's where I measured from. There's my nine mark. So I'm going to 
cut that edge there, and then remove all my excess clay. So now I'm going to drape this clay over my rounded form, and I'm doing this on just a little storage container that I had around. Um, but again, if you're making a longer or smaller hoop, just anything you have around. And I'm just gonna dampen the plastic surface with just a touch of water, and that's gonna help my clay stick to the form. And I like to line it pretty close up to the edge. And that's going to give me a nice little form to build on. All right. So I'm going to bring my elements back into the picture now. And I'm going to be, this is pretty fresh clay, but I'm still going to be dampening it before I add these elements. And just going to use my brush to really thoroughly wet the area. You want water to be sitting on the surface of your clay. If it sucks it all in because it was drier than I'm working, then make sure you add enough water that there's water sitting on the surface. So then I'm going to place my unit, kind of scoot it around until it's looking like it's centered. And then I'm going to gently press it in, not hard enough that it's going to end up pushing the clay up around the edge, but you want to give it a nice tap. And then once you're happy with the positioning, I'm going to come back in with my brush and dampen all of it. That way we'll have a nice strong connection when it dries together. It's one piece. So I'm going to keep working, and if you want to be really specific about this, you can measure the distance in between these units, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I like the way that looks. Again, make sure you're pressing it. and. Once this is dry, I'm going to give my pieces a nudge and push them around and make sure that they're really thoroughly attached before I begin sanding or firing. But as you can see, it's a really easy way to add detail to a simple hoop form. And I'm just going to keep building all the way around and then we'll see the piece when it's dry. So here it is dry and it just comes really easily off of the storage container. So again, make sure you're working on something that has a nice smooth surface that's not going to want to stick to. And I'm ready to sand my edges and clean things up. And again, give them a nudge, knock them around, make sure they're really on there. So those all look good. And I'm going to start with my fine to do a little bit of shaping. And I'm going to work on this because I think it's nice to have the support. If you want to take it off and sand it in a different way, it's up to you. But I think this works really nicely. I'm kind of hanging it off this edge a little bit. And I'm going to kind of blunt that sharp corner. And then I'm going to use my fine to kind of soften this squared edge. And I'll just work this part 
up here so you guys get the idea. And then I'm going to move on to my super fine. Kind of round this out. Work my way through the sanding sponges. And then as I'm getting to the lower grits, I'm going to also come over this top surface. That way when they're polished up, they'll have a nice shine. And then once you've gone along this whole face, if you like sanding on the form, it's really simple to just flip it and then do this side the same way. So I'm working these on the round form just because I know a lot of people are apprehensive of bending their pieces this dramatically after they've fired. Um, you could work this flat and bend it post firing. I just think this is a slightly more approachable method. So once your piece is sanded, if it is round, you're gonna fire an alumina hydrate in a dish. We're gonna be soldering the posts onto our hoops and here's what you're gonna to need to do that. I have a torch and a kneeling pan, some flux, easy solder since I'm just doing one seam, sterling silver earring posts, and daisy ear nuts. I'm going to be using a solder pick, a brush for flux, and two self-closing tweezers. I also have a brick here. So let's solder those posts on. So I'm going to start off by flexing my hoop. And I'm also going to flex the post just by dipping it in there. And then I'm going to use my torch to heat my easy solder. And then I'm going to pick it up with my post. And then I'm going to bring my post over and solder it on. So I'm going to give my hoop a preheat. because this is quite a bit larger than the post. So now I'm gonna come over to my solder. And it should just jump onto your post. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more. And then I'm going to, again, heat this hoop. And I'm going to bring my post in. And it's flashing. And I think that attached. So, best way to tell. So that's soldered on. I'm going to move this hoop to the pickle to clean up any oxides from soldering. So here are my finished hoops. I darkened the low areas with patina gel, that way there's a nice contrast and you can really see the details. I also made another pair where I cut right up to the edge of the accents that I added. And I think that adds a nice little visual interest. I only used one of our finishing touches molds in these two very different looking earrings. With all the shapes and sizes that we offer, there are endless creative possibilities. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.